All right. Hi, everyone. My name is Will Tsai. I am from the Microsoft Azure Incubations team. And I'm Ryan Nowak. I work with Will at Microsoft. And we're maintainers of a new CNCF project called Radius. So uh, first, uh, before we jump in, I'll, I wanted to talk a little bit about what uh, Radius is. Um, so Radius is a uh, cloud-native application platform that works on any cloud. And uh, you know it, it's a new CNCF project. Um, and we're primarily concerned with the, um, the way you define and deploy your application across different platforms. Um, it's uh, an application platform that allows you to uh, define your uh, application one time and then deploy it across um, private, public cloud, and uh, various other platforms. And one of the problems that Radius um, helps to solve is the ability to visually interact with uh, the application um, that you've deployed. Um, and you know, in, in the context of your different cloud platforms, and even across um, compute platforms, um, you know, including Kubernetes and uh, those beyond Kubernetes as well. Um, and the, the the application, an application defined and deployed using Radius, is um, actually becomes self-describing, um, and allows you to visualize the application. Um, that you have actually deployed. So uh, with this like in mind, um, I wanted to run through real quick some uh, visual kind of examples of Radius with uh, an example of a, an application that you might have. Um, a very simple application, but something that might you might have in production, for example. So uh, in this application, we have a front end and a back end container. Um, and they both leverage um, data stores that use op open source portable technology. So uh, theoretically, as a developer, I can take this and deploy it across uh, multiple platforms and multiple clouds. So uh, when, when I'm ready as a developer to deploy this, um, I, use, I would use Radius to define my application and use Radius to do the actual deployment. So as a first step, I would usually uh, use it to, to deploy to my uh, local environment where I would make use of local uh, Docker containers and a local Kubernetes cluster, for example. And then the next step would be to take the same application definition and deploy it to uh, my Azure environment. And I would use Azure um, services in uh, this deployment. And then same story with AWS. If I'm ready to test in AWS, I take the same application, same definition, and use Radius, uh, the Radius toolset to deploy it into um, AWS and using AWS services. Now, when we uh, built the Radius platform, one of the um, key things we wanted to help provide to our users was a way to visualize these um, application-centric concepts that we're introducing as a part of Radius. And not just visualize, but also interact with the application and the architecture and the dependencies that you've actually deployed uh, visually. So one of the problems was that um, GUI work is very specialized and often duplicative. Our team isn't, uh, it's a small team, and um, we're not staffed to uh, dive into the world of uh, UI development. So we needed a platform to build upon that could help accelerate our development. And um, we used Backstage as the backing framework um, to build our dashboard uh, because of its uh, of the ability to leverage its framework and libraries that make it um, a lot faster to get something off the ground. And then we also understand that users are um, happy with their existing dashboards, or you know, users have ad uh, adopted Backstage, and um, using like building on top of Backstage, and using um, the plugins implementation will allow us for um, extensibility and customization, and sort of meet people where they are um, when it comes to their current uh, dashboards. So this is a little bit of different of a talk, right? Because we're not end users. Like, we're not running backstage in production or supporting an enterprise. We're not doing platform engineering per se. We're building an open source project. 
And so it's a little bit different of a use case. But what we've ended up doing is we've both kind of shipped our own version of Backstage that's part of the default install of Radius. And then we've also made plugins so that people can integrate it into their install. So this is kind of the story of like, well, what did we build? How did it go? You know, how are we feeling about it? And what are we going to do next? And so what's on the screen now is the dashboard we built. This is running live somewhere in a, a, a Kubernetes cluster. It is actually on AWS, by the way. Um, and like, if you're a backstage user, you probably see a lot of familiar UI elements here because we just took a lot of components off the shelf from backstage and used them, and it was great. So like, it's helping us accomplish our goals as something that's built into Radius as far as like surfacing some nice UI and being able to show like the applications we've deployed and the environments. I'll just highlight a couple other things. So this is something that we took like totally off the shelf. Like these are all components that are built into Backstage. The only thing that we did to really power this is hook it up to call our API. And it was pretty easy to do that. Uh, the one thing here that we did that's custom, Will mentioned earlier that applications in Radius are self-describing. So we have this component of Radius that we call the application graph. And that captures sort of the architecture view of the application, like what components talk to what as well as the mapping to the real infrastructure that got created. And the intention of this is that we can help everybody in the organization have a shared view of like what's running in production, where was it defined, you know, this is in these four regions and, and, and that sort of thing. So uh, just I'll highlight this a little bit. This is a, a, a sample app that we didn't write, but it's got like 10 microservices in it. And so you can click around here and see things like, well, I've got a database. I know it's really small for everybody out there, but I've got a database here and I see a bunch of lines coming out of it. So I can trace those lines and see like, who's talking to this database server? And under the covers here, we've got all the data about like, well, this is the real database server on AWS that you're talking to. And it's meant to help you sort of navigate and troubleshoot those kind of things. So that's an example of what we built. This was a, this was a custom build. This isn't the uh, backstage catalog, actually. It's our application graph, which is something we think is different but very complementary to the catalog that's in Backstage. So I'm an engineer, and I like to write code. So there's a little bit more here about um, what we did code-wise to help build this. So kind of we talked about two different versions of this. There's the thing that we ship in the box, and that's us building and shipping our own instance of Backstage as part of our install. So like user is talking to a dashboard that's deployed alongside Radius that's talking to our API. And then for somebody who's adopted Backstage and says, hey, we like Radius, this is valuable, we want to put it in our Backstage install, like we've got plugins that you can include in your install, and then those talk to our API. So it's kind of the same architecture, just the difference is like how invested are you in Backstage versus using Radius as a tool. And this is something that was really important to us, like we wanted to meet users where they are and not kind of fragment the workflows and the tools that they use. Um, I won't talk to everything on this slide, but if you're if you're a nerd like me, like here's kind of the code that we built and how we layered the code. So we ended up building a front end plugin and a back end plugin, and then the UI that you saw earlier for the application graph is kind of in its own library, so we can put that in other places if we need to in the future. And then what's in the boxes? Those top two boxes are actually all these boxes for us, which is like here's the back end instance and app instance, and like ultimately the thing we're shipping is not different than what anybody else who's running Backstage has. Uh, and then just some notes about our experiences with this. Um, so some of the things that were really good, like this was a massive accelerator for our progress. Like I think if we tried to build this from scratch without Backstage, we'd probably just still be talking about it. So the fact that Backstage was there and we could kind of leverage it as a framework was hugely valuable for us. Um, it was very delightful to me how easy it was to call a foreign API from Backstage. Um, that was a real highlight because we, we do have our own API and we need to interact with it. Um, some of the things that are less great about this model is the container is really big. Um, so the, we, we did a lot of work on this and got down to like 950 megabytes with our Backstage install, which is a lot for something that gets installed by default when you spin up Radius. Like we really want that to be quick. So I think we might revisit this, but like I'm not eager to spend more time with JavaScript build systems. So if anybody's figured out how to get a small backstage install, like please talk to us, we'd like to hear about it. And then one of the things that we're, we're just not totally sure what to do, I think we'd like to take another crack at it is like, okay, the backstage catalog is there, that's valuable. We've got the Radius app graph. It's, they're kind of fundamentally doing different things. Backstage is tracking like, what are your assets and who wrote them? And then our data structure is, is tracking like, where did you deploy this? What is the state of it? What cloud infrastructure or Kubernetes infrastructure did you spin up? These are very complementary things, but they're clearly not the same. 
Uh, we haven't quite figured out how we want to combine these and surface that to users, but we think it could be really valuable, as well as inter interacting with some of the other plugins that exist in the Backstage ecosystem. And uh, before we uh, kind of close out here, I wanted to take some time to talk about some of the future work we've been thinking about. It's uh, really still early days for us in, in the dashboard journey for Radius. And you might have noticed the in the uh, application graph, the visual application graph that Ryan showed, it's very basic. We, we use what's stock out of the uh, backstage box today. So um, the lines you, you saw were very simple. The, there, there was no color coding, very simple like architecture diagrams. We want to improve that UI and make it um, a lot more interactive for the user. So things like tooltips when you mouse over um, each box to show the details of that resource, um, things like that we want to improve upon. And then uh, Ryan touched on this, but we want, need to figure out if it's a good idea to build an integration between our application graph and the application graph data and the backstage software catalog so that you can have a view of not only what you've defined and what, what the definition is in the software catalog, but also what you've actually deployed into your various environments um, in the application graph. And then lastly, we, we want to really expand upon uh, leveraging and, and using the backstage ecosystem a lot better and building additional plugins to expose other Radius features and also being able to build, uh, have our plugins, the Radius plugins, interop with other backstage plugins to um, improve and elevate the overall dashboard experiences. So you can imagine like with something with application graph, if we can uh, mix that together with an observability plugin, that could be really powerful, right? You not only get to see exactly what you've deployed and what the uh, landscape of what you've deployed looks like, but you can have observability um, data layered all over it. And uh, we think that could be a, potentially a very uh, exciting use case for uh, Backstage. So with that, I'll leave you off with uh, some QR codes and uh, some links to some of our materials. We uh, have our documentation, uh, our GitHub, and then also our Discord server. So please uh, definitely do uh, reach, reach out to us via these, uh, these uh, avenues. And we're always looking for collaborators and contributors um, to work on this. And it's, uh, l like we said earlier, it's fully open sourced um, in the CNCF. Um, so encourage you all to check it out. Thank you.